Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock for Ellen Hudson, and I bring you yet one more watercolor trick. I'm going to be sharing with you how to use salt in your watercoloring. Now, this is not something that will help you if you're looking for something archival, because I've been told that the salt will potentially continue to eat into the paper someday, and it may not last forever. So, just to keep that in mind, I don't want to give you advice on something and have you want your painting to last for a hundred years. I haven't tested that out, but that was just something that I read and wanted to pass that on to you. So I'm starting by painting a color with a, a nice flat wash into an area that I want to put the salt in. You want to have a good amount of pigment in there and you want to have it fairly wet. I would recommend if you want to use this technique, go try a couple swatches of different colors and see which ones work. I, as I was practicing this and preparing for this video, I tried a lot of colors and some didn't work as well as others. I don't know whether it's always because I, I wasn't consistent in the amount of pigment versus the amount of water, uh, when I put the salt on, how long I waited to take it off. There's a lot of different factors, but I just recommend that you give it a shot and see. It's really fun to watch this effect happen too. I'm just sprinkling table salt on. It's regular old iodized table salt. We'll sprinkle, sprinkle a little bit of it here and there. The more you sprinkle on there, the less of the little spidery things you'll get. Because you'll see it, it makes these little stars. Because the salt is actually absorbing the water and absorbing the pigment along with it and removing it from the paper. So you get these little like, white starry patterns. I'm going to do a green pattern down here um, in this bottom section. And again, I'm just going to do a nice solid wash and my brush is fully loaded with the color that I mixed up with this green so that just in case I end up pressing my brush down the only thing that's going to come out is more of the same color as opposed to a lot of water and then I get a lot of bleeding so I'm just going to reiterate that because a lot of people have been excited to find out that there is a way to do a better flat wash and this one may not look really flat right now I'm just going to move some color around because I'm going to be doing this pattern in it, so uh, I moved the color around until it was relatively even, and then I wanted to do just a swash through this of salt instead of salt everywhere, so I wanted to show you both different looks, and uh, let's sprinkle that across, and you can watch immediately as that salt gets to working, and it's been a, a little minute there while I was preparing this other piece so you can see what the salt is doing on both the red and the green piece. This one is a little square of blue. And it's going to be on my little swatch packet that I'm making. You could do these little swatches in two by two sheets, little plastic sheets, or you could put them on a ring like I'm doing. And there's information on the blog for how to download a little piece to put on the back of your little sheets so you can have little swatch sheets to remind yourself of what we're learning. I'm using both the regular table salt and some larger salt. There's all different kinds of sea salts and things and you can get different patterns from them based on the size of the salt. You can also get different patterns based on the amount of salt that you use. So experiment and see. Now this one was coming along great and I wanted to make sure I stopped it before it took all the color off. I left one overnight once and there was no paint left. It was all in the salt. But you can see it's still wet because I got a little bit on my cloth. I'm just using a Kleenex to wipe it off. So what I decided to do, it's this bottom section that was wet, is I dabbed the paint off a little bit and then let it sit there to dry a little bit further. And since this one had the same issue going on, I have some very wet paint in the center. If I were to rub that off while it's very wet, I'll get streaks of green. If you think about it, that salt is full of paint. So you want that to be on the dry side before you remove it. And then you'll just rub it off or brush it off. So here's the infographic that you can go and pin to your Pinterest board. It's on the blog. Link is in the description down below. Make yourself a little swatch sheet for your collection. And I will see you guys again next week. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye-bye.